Today in Across the Fence, we're gearing up for the Labor Day weekend and the traditional farewell to summer with a backyard barbecue. We're going to feature some good-for-you grilling ideas using delicious and nutritious foods. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Joining me are two Vermont-based food and nutrition experts. Jill Goodrow is a registered dietitian from the New England Dairy and Food Council, and Katie Webster is a professional recipe developer and food stylist. Well, it's time to fill up the propane tank and fire up the grill because we're talking about better foods at the barbecue. And we're starting with the meat, since it's generally the main focus. Jill, what are some of your strategies for making a better burger? Sure, when you're hosting your next summer cookout, there are some easy techniques you can use to save calories and slim down your burger. Excellent. And the key is go lean with protein. Okay. Lean protein can help keep your weight in check because it helps you keep fuller, longer, mm -hmm. um, and also helps build muscle. And they also lower your risk for some chronic diseases while consuming less of the clogging artery fat. Okay. So let's start today with some of, um, some of the burgers I have here. Um, let's we'll start with the traditional beef burger with ground beef Think lean, mm -hmm. 90 to 95 percent lean ground beef. A lean beef burger has about three grams of saturated fat and an average about 150 calories that's in, a, in a three ounce cooked portion, mm -hmm. which is about the size of a hockey puck, and that's a good rule of thumb to think of when you're sizing any burger. Okay. Um, with ground beef, you're going to get the biggest nutrition bang for your calories. Okay. And here's why. With lean ground beef, you're not only getting high quality protein, you're also getting iron, immune boosting zinc, and um, B vitamins, and some important minerals that keep your blood and your vessels very healthy. Excellent. Um, the problem with many pre-made burgers that you see when you're shopping um, in the meat case is that they're really way too big. A lot of them are double in size, um, which means that they deliver double the amount of calories, right. fat, and cholesterol. Um, which really doesn't leave you much room for the other foods at the <laughs> and barbecue. And you want to be able to eat a lot. <laughs> um, so a solution would be to shop for that 90 to 95 percent lean ground beef and make your own burger. And I actually have some tricks that you can also do to help slim down that beef burger. Okay. Um, what I suggest, and this is great this time of year, um, to add some flavor and some additional nutrients to your burger is, you know, add some, add some extra vegetables and some fruit. I actually took some leftover zucchini I had from my garden, shredded it up, um, and this can um, mix very well with ground beef. Oh, no and this, kidding. The same, I picked some fresh blueberries, um, and this all adds a wonderful flavor, flavor to the beef. Interesting, okay. Okay, and next I'd like to um, talk about the ground turkey burger. Mm -hmm. um, with ground turkey, like, like ground beef, you wanna look for that 90 to 95% lean ground beef. Um, the problem with ground turkey like beef is that not all ground tur turkey is created equal. Some is made in part with um, dark turkey meat mm -hmm. or less percent ground turkey which can you know, also add extra calories and extra fat. So again, look for that 90 to 95% lean ground turkey. And now, another way, um, also with the ground turkey, like the beef burgers, mm -hmm. that some are pre-made, again, which can be quite large in Not size. Um, but many actually have you know, additional additives, preservatives, and salt, which really can put you at health risk. So my suggestion, again, would be to make your own turkey burger like I did here. Um, one trick I say is that uh, if you have some leftover boneless, skinless turkey in your refrigerator or when you go to the store, um, purchase up that boneless, skinless turkey, um, what you can do is just put it in a food processor and grind it up. Oh, okay. And then combine it with some, some seasonings. Um, I like to use seasonings that I have available in my refrigerator, such as Dijon mustard. Um, the Dijon mustard, is great with turkey because it can add some zest and it also binds the patty together as well. Good thinking. Gives it some, some extra flavor. You can also use what other, other seasonings that you have in your refrigerator. I use about oh, a quarter, quarter cup of the Dijon mustard to about a pound and a half of the skinless, boneless turkey. Excellent. Well, now what about people who don't want to eat meat? Um, well, um, fish, a fish-based pat patty, if you're not into the red meat or you're not into the uh, white meat, a fish-based patty such as a salmon burger mm -hmm. um, is a good choice. The American Heart Association recommends um, consuming fish at least twice a week. And the salmon is a good choice to help fill that because 
Salmon is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids, which is really essential in the diet. It helps protect your heart and also helps improve your memory and brain function. That reason alone we should eat. Yeah. So when you're shopping for a salmon burger, what should you look for? Um, wild salmon is a good choice. It's naturally bright in, in color due to its food source. Mm -hmm. um, and it typically tends to have a little extra of the omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. Um, you can also make your own salmon burger. Um, very easy. You can take um, salmon fillets. Um, if you have a food processor, grind it up and add some seasonings. Um, onions or scallions will add a lot of flavor, minced garlic, oregano. Um, also add some egg white and breadcrumbs because again you want to make sure that that will Stick bind. together, right. Um, and then maybe some herbs like some parsley um, and that will give it some flavor and it won't add a lot of calories. Excellent. Now our last burger here is um, uh, for vegetarians, there's loads of different options that you can right. choose as a meat meatless burger. Um, I chose a black bean burger today because the beans have a lot of fiber, have a lot of protein, which help keep you fuller longer. Um, when shopping for a burger, um, you know, I suggest, you know, looking for something with beans. Um, today I actually made my own black bean burger. Very easy. You just take a can of black beans. Mm -hmm. You can rinse and drain them. Um, stick them in a food processor. Again, add the egg white and the breadcrumbs because you want to make sure that you're binding everything together. Um, and then you can add some some oregano, um, you know, or some different vegetables again to come, come out together and makes a great burger and doesn't add a lot of calories. Lots of flavor. All right, let's talk about the bun. Yes, um, there's three things to think about when we're thinking about a bun for your burger. Number one, think small. You know, I mentioned that the size of the burger should be about the size of a hockey puck, which is about three ounces. So make sure that your bun is no bigger than your burger. Right. Also, go whole grain. Um, instead of using that traditional white bun, Go for a bun that contains whole grain or um, a whole grain sandwich thin that's a little bit less dense. Right. And then lastly, actually pile in the nutrients and minerals. This, uh, having a burger, it's a great time to add vegetables like your lettuce, your onion, some avocado that adds extra fiber and you're getting more nutrients for your burger. Also, um, add some calcium on, add that extra slice of low-fat cheese as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I love the, all the fresh vegetables. And speaking of fresh vegetables, Katie, it's time for you to talk about how we can incorporate more vegetables in our cookouts. Right. So one of my favorite things to have all season long, mm -hmm. and it's always a hit at a barbecue, is a great big green salad. Well, and that's just a beautiful salad. I know. Salad. Look at that. So the best thing about this is you, whatever you have on hand, whatever's in season, mm -hmm. put that into your salad. Of course, right now we have lots of beautiful local tomatoes. They're bursting out of the garden, so I put tons of them in there. I added some local cabbage and some carrots and some beautiful broccoli and red peppers. So just make it like a rainbow. I always tell my kids, eat like a rainbow. So. So just, you know, whatever looks good. And then I'm kind of a dressing snob. I like to make mine from scratch. And that's a great way to save on calories. So I start out with a real crowd pleaser. It's a creamy dressing. So this is a half cup of Greek yogurt. And this is low fat Greek yogurt. Um, and it's really thick and creamy. And then to that, I'm just gonna add two tablespoons of mayonnaise. This is regular mayonnaise and it's two tablespoons only. And then I'm gonna add in some white wine vinegar. This is two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. Four teaspoons of chopped shallot. And then I like to add in fresh dill. This came out of my garden too. And um, you know that really boosts a lot of flavor, but it's very little calories. Some salt, pepper, and why don't you whisk that up for me, sure, Judy? Sure, I can. Let me get that little thing out of there. So that has a ton of flavor. A little bit goes a long way. Now this makes about six servings. You can double this. And then that's enough for your whole salad because it's got tons of flavor from the vinegar and the fresh herbs. And it smells amazing. Right. And that was easy. That, that's done. Right. That's it. I okay. mean, <laughs> everybody can do that. As easy as opening up a bottle of dressing and then it goes on. So look at all those beautiful colors. Wow, that looks really good. I think you wanna. I know it does. Right now. <laughs>
And so what are some other ways to incorporate produce that's in season right now for the barbecue? Sure. Well, you know, the grill doesn't have to be all about the burger. True. Um, you can add flavor, you can add color, and you can add nutrients by adding vegetables right on the grill. And today I have some cut up peppers, some mushrooms, an onion, you know, also tomatoes, other vegetables can work really well as well. Anything really fresh from your garden this time of season. Um, those make great for a kebab. What I do is I just, I just lightly brush with olive oil um, before sticking on the grill to prevent from sticking and Again, it adds, adds more color and flavor and nutrients. Um, and the flavors to, are amazing. Yeah. One to, of the things I like to add, I can you know sprinkle on a little bit of Italian seasonings. It's mm -hmm. basically no calories. There's this great local company that makes a Mediterranean herb blend, and it's you know it's adding tons of flavor without extra calories. Well, of course, we can't talk about barbecues without talking about side dishes, which right. usually is potato salad, my favorite. Right. I mean, what would be a, exactly a, a barbecue without potato salad? So um, yeah, but there's a lot of calories lurking in potato salad. Right. So, um, you know, typically I, I like to bring something that's a little bit unusual, a twist on a classic. So this one I make has um, horseradish cheddar in it. Ooh. I know. So horseradish goes great with grilled meat. Mm -hmm. It just is a really nice balance. And it's unexpected. It's a secret ingredient, if you will. So typically with potato salad, you boil your potatoes. You let them cool, then you peel them, slice them. I don't do that, I'm kind of a slacker. Mm. And so what I do is I just cut up my potatoes, I steam them, and steaming helps preserve the nutrients. Oh, and then good. leaving the skins on will give you minerals and fiber. So then when it comes out of the steamer, if they're still hot, I sprinkle on some white wine vinegar and that will boost the flavor. It adds a brightness to the recipe without adding extra calories. So you let that cool and then, um, I, I like to make a nice creamy dressing. So again, I'm going to start with some Greek yogurt. This is a half cup of Greek yogurt. This is low fat, plain Greek style yogurt. And then I'm going to add three tablespoons of mayonnaise. And I'm going to whisk that together with a little salt and pepper. And that's the base there. So then I'm going to add in my potatoes. Those have already cooled. And then that, this is um, <clears throat> one cup of shredded horseradish cheddar, a cup of chopped celery hearts for crunch, again, bulking up with those vegetables. Yep. And then I like to add in a quarter cup of minced red onion. You don't need a ton. A quarter cup is plenty. That'll just add more flavor. And then I have three tablespoons of chopped fresh herbs. So um, I would say rec I would recommend to use um, tender herbs. Mm -hmm. So things like basil, chives, things that um, you know are nice and tender. Okay. No woody herbs. Right. And then you want to, um, and that's it. Oh, did I do salt and pepper? Yep. So salt and pepper, and then that's it. You just stir it together, and look at how creamy this is. That's delicious. Now, Jill, I know that Greek style yogurt is very popular now. Yeah. Yes. And the main difference between Greek yogurt and regular yogurt, because I know a lot of people usually have that know. question, is the protein. Mm -hmm. There's twice the amount of protein in Greek yogurt than regular yogurt, and similarly. Um, both yogurts are a really an excellent source of vitamin D, which helps absorb calcium to maintain and build strong bones. Personally, I really like Greek yogurt because you can substitute it in recipes such as the potato salad. Right, um, And it really has that creamy, smooth texture. And also, it's great alone as a snack and topped with fruit as well. All right, well, let's talk about dessert. Right. Everyone wants to talk about I dessert. I think my children would <laughs> stage a protest if I skipped dessert. Right. So um, I like to get them involved in making the dessert. So this summer, we've been doing a ton of berry picking. So I have some fresh raspberries here. All I did was I pureed them in my food processor. Mm -hmm. And I strained out the seeds and whisked them with some vanilla Greek yogurt, a little sweetener. You can use maple syrup, honey, whatever you have on hand, and then just pour it straight into a popsicle mold. And it's like a frozen yogurt treat. My kids go crazy for them. They look very good. Yeah, and then you can also do this with just pureed watermelon too. So it's, skin, it's seedless uh, watermelon. I just cubed it up, put it in the food processor, pureed it. My kids helped me do this. It was so easy. And then you just pour it into the molds, molds and they think it's so much fun to okay. be. Okay. Well, let's quickly go over a portion size because we've got our plate full of food and you can just
just show us what, what yeah, we need to look for. Sure, um, and you, this is like a typical um, plate from all the foods that we presented here today. Um, we have one third of our plate is filled with, the, with the, the burger, the protein. We have over half our plate filled with vegetables um, and also a slice of cheese for our dairy and the bun makes up our whole grain. A very complete plate, well balanced. Um, lots of food and lots of good food. Lots of food, lots of good food and um, lots of color. Yeah. Now Katie, where can people get these recipes? So I'm going to put all of these recipes on my website, healthyseasonalrecipes.com. Okay. And you can find all those and more there. Well, I want to thank you both so much for joining us today. This is just absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to, for the weekend to hit so we can do some cooking. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.